Hi guys, welcome back to Kathy LaPierre Art. So today I'm going to be making another one of those fantastic recycle art pieces that everybody's been going crazy for. And I'm actually going to be making what I'm hoping looks like a tiara. So I'm going to be doing this really differently this time. What I've done is I've actually, let me zoom out, I've gone ahead and I've put a piece of plastic down right on my silicone mat, taped it down as best I can just to sort of keep it flat. Um, and then underneath that, I have a piece of paper and I drew out the shape of the tiara that I wanted and I just laid out my pieces. I even made some little circles. I just laid them out in the shape, the design that I wanted and then just took my pencil and very quickly just kind of traced around inside and outside all of them. So that way I'll still have a guideline of something to follow. So this is my design. Hopefully you guys can see it. It's not very dark. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is actually take some of this wonderful stuff. This is amazing mold putty. I just get this at Michael's. It comes with a part A and a part B. Um, it's just like modeling clay, <coughs> modeling clay. So you basically mix equal parts of each of these together, and it will give you um, a nice waterproof silicone rubber edge that you can put, you know, to make borders or whatever you want. So that's actually what we're going to do. Now, looking at my design, it is pretty intricate. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that level of detail or if I'm just going to make my life easy and just make it smooth. I can always go back and cut in those extra details that I want. So we'll see how this goes when I get to that point. So I'm just trying to get the stuff out of the jar. It's stuck in the bottom. Let's see if I can stick a stick in there to get it out. Ah, it's Really wedged in there, good. Oh, I got, oh, I got it, okay. <laughs> All right, so this one is, let's see, this is part B. Feels like silly putty. And then we're gonna take our part A, which is the same amount. I have used some of this container before, but um, Still the same amount left because you use equal parts each time. So I'm just going to take all of what I have left. And same thing. It feels exactly the same as the other stuff. Now all you do is knead them together until it's a solid color. All right, you can see that's a nice, fairly uniform butter yellow color. So now all we're going to do is roll it. Oh, my plastic is moving on me. That's not what I want. Because remember, not only do we have to go up here, but we have to come around the bottom too because we're making this as a, a complete mold so that we can fill this up. So let's see, let's... And all I'm doing is rolling it out so that it's long enough to make it all the way around. A little more. And I'm just going to reattach, <clears throat> reattach these back together now so that it's not so difficult later. I'm just going to roll that some more. Okay, so now we'll just reattach this end here. I'm a little bit out of frame. Let me zoom out just a tiny bit. There we go. 
So you can see I'm just reattaching here. And all we wanna do is make a border around our basic shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we can certainly go back and cut afterwards. But the less that we have to cut, the better. So I'm gonna try. And follow the shape, sort of. <laughs> See how how much I can get it in there like that. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just so that I can cut down on the amount of resin I'm going to be wasting because I will be cutting some of this away. All right, so we're gonna leave this to cure. This only needs about 20 minutes. Um, we'll come back and then we'll start filling this with clear and doing our design. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. So today I have a really fun piece. This is definitely outside my comfort zone. It's not like anything I've, I normally do. Um, I'm actually gonna be trying the cardboard roll technique that you guys have been seeing. And instead of just doing a flat object, I'm actually going to be making a tiara and hopefully I'm going to try and tip it upright and bend it around something so that I can actually get it to be three-dimensional. Um, I have another surprise that I'm going to show you guys once I get to that point. I don't want to spoil it yet. So first things first, um, I started with my thin viscosity resin that I get from Counterculture and I mixed up about three ounces. Just getting rid of any of those bubbles that are rising to the surface. So I'm just kind of guessing. Um, as you saw me earlier, I took the um, rubber and I made the border for the outside of this. I guessed at about three ounces. I want there to be barely enough to cover this because I need to do a second layer and I need to be able to pull the whole thing out and have it still be bendable. So I need to make sure that the, the clear layer isn't cured to the point that I can't bend it anymore. So this is gonna be tricky. Now let's just hope and pray that my clear resin doesn't leak underneath the edge of this. I mean, I poked and prodded and pressed to really make sure that this had good contact, so I really hope that it does. I'm just getting up into those edges to make sure that those are full. And with this particular piece, like I said, less is more because we're gonna have to be able to bend this afterwards. I don't want too much in there. All right, let's stop there. I've got about half an ounce left. Let's see if we can spread this out. Now for my plastic, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, it's just a, a heavy duty plastic shower curtain that I got at the dollar store. Any plastic will work for this. I prefer the heavier plastic because it's a little heavier duty, so you can be a little bit tougher on it. If you happen to pull too hard or you know, tug on something, you don't want to tear a hole in it either. That would completely undo your whole project. So I highly suggest this nice thick um, shower curtain plastic. It definitely does the job. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit it with my heat gun just to make sure we don't have any bubbles created from all the poking and prodding. And there's always some, you know, always. It looks like we've made good contact though. It doesn't look like I have any leaking, so that's good. I do want to make sure this is pulled nice and tight because I can see there's still a little bit of a ridge in the plastic. Now, I wanna be really careful and not pull it too hard because I don't want my silicone to pop up off the plastic because it's nice and secured on there. But I'm gonna take just a piece of my packing tape. Let's do two pieces. I'll do a top and a bottom. I 
think I'm going to put just a touch more in the center because we want to make sure that it's completely filled. good. Yeah, don't worry too much about the pockets. I'm going to just give it a quick smooth over and then start sticking the cardboard pieces in. So we really just want to make sure it's got a nice thin coverage but not too much. All right, that looks good. Let's start putting our pieces in before those bubbles start settling back in again because of my bent plastic. All right, so we're gonna take our little cardboard pieces and this makes it super easy. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick them in where I had made my little drawings. Okay, one more. Okay, I'm just going to adjust to make sure everything is where I want it. All right, that looks pretty good. I like it. up a little bit okay so that looks good I don't think I need to take you guys down there's not a whole lot to see up close other than the, you know just that the pieces are stuck really firmly into the resin <coughs> so let's see I have I've got multiple flat resin um, resin Wow multiple <laughs> silicone molds um, that I'll probably just rest on top of this just really gently though because again we don't want it to create any problems we just want it to help keep our piece down so I think the heart's going to work for that let's see what else do I have how about these guys I've got these round ones here Just gonna place those right there. The two little guys on the outside, I probably don't have to cover them, but I'll do it just because I covered all the others and that way I know for sure that I covered all my bases. So let's see, what else do I have? I've got some squares, I guess we can use those. They're two different sizes, but that doesn't matter. So we'll just stick one right here and one right here. And then I feel like I need something else there. All I have is long and skinny. Oh, wait a minute. I have a wine butler mold. Let's try that. That's pretty good. That little guy on the end still needs something. Let's help him. What can we give him? And last but not least, let's stick an oval on there. <laughs> there we go. So that way everybody's got something on them to make sure that we get a nice, you know, hopefully sort of flat piece. I'm going to leave this to cure. I'm going to check it in about an hour and a half and see if it's cured enough that I can pick it up and bend it 
but I'm not actually going to bend it yet because I still have to come back and do the colors. So, but yeah, we're going to come back and check it and see if it's at a good place. Um, as soon as that clear is just barely set up enough that I can pour the colors on top of it, we're going to go for it. So I will see you guys back here in an hour and a half and we'll see how we are. Bye guys. Hey guys. All right, time for the next part. So it looks like my piece is cured up enough. I, like I had before, these are just the molds that I had. I just flung on top just to help keep this flat. So, whoops, just fling all of those aside. So what we're gonna do first, because my clear is already down, I can go ahead and start putting all these fun beads and crystals and things that I have. Um, I actually have four different, um, I guess we'll call them objects, four different types of objects to put inside. Um, I have those, and if I could pick this up, hopefully without dropping them everywhere. Um, I also have these pink hydrangeas. So, in addition to that, I also have four colors, including the glitter, if we count that as a color. So, I need to be able to fit um, this beautiful carnation by Counterculture, and then this lovely glitter. <laughs> Love this. It's called Dazzling Diva. This is also by Counterculture. As for my crystals, um, these are some crystal points that I got at Michael's and they have like an iridescence to them. They're really, really beautiful. Super expensive though, so I would highly suggest going when they're having a bead sale and definitely make sure you've got that 40% or 20% off coupon, whichever one they're doing, because don't pay full price for these. This was probably $12 for the string without any coupons or discounts and I would never buy that. That's crazy. Um, I also have these beautiful little beads. Um, I guess you could call them sort of like a moonstone. These ones are shiny. I do have some others that are a matte finish so they look more like a moonstone but these have that iridescence to them that's really really beautiful so I think those will look nice in here too. Um, and then last but not least I did some pearls because what pretty pink princess girl doesn't love her pink beautiful pearls. So we're going to put some of those in. Um, I also have um, Bria Reese. This is called Blush. This is a super intense, like a neon carnation pink. It's beautiful. So that's going to go in some of these spaces to give us some of the see-through sections that we want. Um, I've also got Fondly Pink Mica and this pink to orange color shift luminescence powder that I get from Jet Age Studios. I'm going to mix these two together to give this a little bit more oomph. <laughs> so um, let's put aside the stuff that I'm not using just yet and let's work with our solid pieces. So first things first, I have these beautiful flowers. They are covered in a sheet of plastic. They're very delicate. So I'm going to use my tweezers where I put them. Where are my tweezers? Oh, for goodness sake. When I want them, of course, I can't find them. All right, here's my bent tweezers. We'll use these. So let's see. Now, some of these are fatter than others. Like, these are too wide, so I wouldn't put it in there. But I think maybe up there would be a good place for one. Whoops. And they're very delicate, so you have to be gentle. Can't get it out now, of course. All right, we're just gonna stick it down in there, just like that. And I really love my crystal points, so let's put some of these in here.
All right, guys, we're at the last part. So I'm gonna do the gold around the outside. And I am noticing that on a couple of these, it's it looks like they're actually lifting up and the color is seeping out. So I'm, I'm not happy about that. I think I went ahead with the next step a little too soon, but I can fix that afterwards. I'll go back with some gold and I'll paint over those parts to make sure that they're hidden. Um, so I've got four ounces of clear resin this time. And we're just going to go ahead and put some gold mica powder in there. This is one of my favorites. It's a pig. It's called Pigmenti Per Artisti. It's by Iridron. Um, this is pale gold. And again, I'm doing a really thin layer because I want to be able to bend this afterwards. So I've got it um, hopefully thin enough. I'm just kind of bummed that these things are seeping out. Hope I can fix it. <clears throat> okay, that looks pretty good. So all I'm going to do is fill in my spaces around all the colors that I did, hopefully taking care not to pour gold inside the spaces the way I poured color outside. That looks pretty good. All right, now this part actually is wider than I wanted. I'm gonna attempt, attempt to try and cut this down so that it's closer to these petals. I don't want this to be quite so big, um, but we'll see what happens when I get to that point. You know, you have your plans and then you go to do them and they don't work out. So we're gonna attempt and see. So I'm just gonna hit everything with a heat gun really quick, make sure there's nothing, you know, no giant bubbles we need to worry about, like right there. Oh, that looks good. All right. Looks good, guys. We're going to stop here. I'm going to let it cure up a little bit more. Hopefully, in a couple hours, it will be cured enough that I can pick this up and put it on top of my container so that we can bend it into the shape of a tiara. So I will see you guys for that next part. See you soon. Bye, guys. Hey everybody, so we're back for the last part. Now, I'm really, fingers crossed, man, I really hope this works, because I'm so excited with how great it came out. I just hope that it, it does what I want. So one thing I did that you guys didn't see, I decided to do off camera was, actually, let me zoom in so you guys can actually see. You'll notice all the wire. I decided that I was gonna put in a set of fairy lights that I had, totally forgot I had them. Um, three batteries, set it up, put it in there. I'm not going to do it yet because I want to wait and save it as a surprise till the end so you guys can see how it turns out. Now, as far as this goes, I'm going to have to clear off all of this stuff because the plastic is on the table and it's taped down as you guys remember. So I'm just going to untape this plastic. Hopefully I can get it off. I'm just going to throw this aside. Now I'm going to take my plastic. It's going to be kind of tricky to do this. So let me see if I can get a little bit more space so you guys can see. So I'm just going to put my plastic bin like this. Now I do have another piece of plastic because I want to make sure that it doesn't stick to this. I mean this plastic I don't think it will, but just on, to be on the safe side I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I'm going to take my other piece of plastic and put it right on top of my piece. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I can actually remove the border. Yeah, look at that. came off in one nice piece. Just have to... So if I wanted to make another tiara, I could because this has a nice flat bottom where it came off of that piece you know, solid. So I might be able to use that again. All right, so now that we've got that ready, just put your plastic. And just put it right over the top. Now I'm kind of winging this because this is a, I'm making this up as I go. 
So I'm just going to hold on to it. Hopefully I don't drop it. And I'm just going to flip it over. I can get it over there. Oh, it looks fantastic. It turned out really, really nice. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm probably going to have to stand it up. I thought I could lay it down, but I think I'm going to have to stand it because it's just a little too wide to make it all the way around. So I guess we're going to have to pick this thing up. Let's see if we can do it. It's just tricky because the batteries keep getting in the way, but we're going to try. does not want to stay. Very tricky getting this just right. I'm literally just jamming different tools and things that I have on my table just to try and get the height that I want so that this doesn't roll away because it's trying to leave. I don't want that. Okay. I think that's good. So it doesn't need to be too perfect. I just want it to be able to stand. All right, so let me take you guys down so you can actually see what I'm doing. So this is how far we got. Now I'm, I'm, it is curved more than I'd like it to be, but once this is cured enough that I can take it off, I'll bend it back outwards a little bit so that it's not quite so bendy. But I think this is going to be good. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Bye, guys. Hey, everybody. So let's get this thing unwrapped and see how it turned out. It is so cute. This would be really cute. You could put like an LED candle inside of it. I mean, it has lights on it, but you know, if you wanted to put something more like flames, you could do candle. Um, I probably will do some detailing to this, maybe along the edges. I'll do a little sanding. I might even put some jewels on there. We'll see how far I get, but. I definitely think I'm going to do some more to it. So this is the outside wrapping. Get it off of there. Move this out of our way. And here is our super cute tiara. Now it is really tall. Like I said, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do some sanding to try and bring it down, but it is so cute. Oh my God, it's cute. All right, I'm gonna put this sitting here and I'm gonna take you guys off the stand so you can check it out. Keep you sideways, there we go. So how adorable is that? And it does something else. What do you think of that? Now let's turn the light on or off. <laughs> and there she is, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you guys give this one a try. This was a lot of fun. A little bit more work, but definitely worth it. This came out super cute. So take care, guys. I'll see you for the next video. And until then, everybody stay warm. If you're in winter weather like me, we got a foot of snow last night. Yay. <laughs> Love you guys. Take care. See you soon. Bye.